Here's our next example of how to work with the conservation of energy equation to solve something we've seen before called the Atwood machine. And of course, the Atwood machine is a um, kind of an interesting name for just a simple pulley. But imagine that we have a pulley attached to the ceiling, and maybe I'll draw the ceiling like that. And we have a mass of 8 kilograms hanging on a string going over the pulley to the other side that has a mass of 2, two kilograms attached to the other end. The 8 kilogram mass is 2 meters above the ground and the question is when we let this thing go and this large mass is accelerating downward, small mass accelerating upward, what would be the speed of this large mass just before it hits the ground after it's traveled downward for 2 meters? A problem like that is just ideal for the equation where we can say that energy initial equals energy final which means that any work input plus any initial potential energy the system had plus any initial kinetic energy the system had is equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus any energy we might have lost due to overcoming resistance or friction or anything like that. Okay, so now we have to decide which of those we don't have. So is there any work being put in while the pulley is moving and while the mass are moving? The answer is no, so that means this is zero. What is the initial potential energy? Well, that is provided for by the large mass, M2, being in this position starting out. So we can say that we have, that would be uh, M2G times H, H of course being the two meters. Kinetic energy, well, initially it's starting from rest, so that would be zero. That equals the final potential energy, well, at the end, just before the big mass hits the ground, the small mass will be at a height of two meters, so we'll have m1gh plus just before it hits the ground the system will have kinetic energy this mass will be moving downward at some final velocity this mass will be moving upward at the same velocity of course opposite direction so therefore they both have kinetic energy so we can write one half times the sum of the masses m1 plus m2 times v final squared and then finally, since there's no friction anywhere in the pulley or in the string or anything like that, we can say that we will not lose any energy, so that's equal to zero. So that becomes our equation. That's the one we have to solve for V final. So what we have to do now is move this term over to the left side. So we have M2GH minus M1GH is equal to one half times M1 plus M2 times V final squared. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a G and an H out of here and multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction here and move the 2 on that side. So we'll end up with 2GH times M2 minus, whoop, a little too fast here, minus M1 equals, so now we have M1 plus M2 times V final squared. So now we're going to take uh, let's see, what we're going to do now is divide both sides by M1 plus M2, so this disappears and ends up over on this side, M1 plus M2. And then finally we'll turn the equation around, makes it a little bit easier to look at, so we have V final squared is equal to uh, 2GH times M2 minus M1 divided by M1 plus M2. And then finally we need to take the square root of both sides, which means that V final will be equal to the square root of 2GH times M2 minus M1 divided by, and I'm going to write it like that, M2 plus M1. So reversing the M1, M2 right there. That's a 2. All right. Now, what's interesting here is, let's say that we just simply dropped an object from this height. What will be the speed when it reaches the, the ground? It would simply be V final would be the square root of just 2GH. But since there's a pulley, uh, a, there's a string attached to that, it goes over a pulley and attached to another mass, and of course, they're accelerating like this, we realize that this will not be falling down at the free fall rate, and so therefore there's an adjusting factor that's determined by the other term right there. All right, so now let's plug in the numbers and see what we get. So this is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 times h was 2 meters, and we're going to multiply that times M2 minus M1, which would be 8 minus 2, divided by M2 plus M1, which is 8 plus 2. So let's see what we get 
when we calculate that. So we have uh, 2 times 9.8 times 2 times 6 and divide that by 10 and then take the square root and we get 4.85. So finally we can say the final velocity is 4.85 meters per second when it reaches the ground. Let me check real quick again. So it would be about 36, 100, 3.6, 36. Yep, that sounds about right, roughly speaking. All right, so that's how we work with the Atmut machine, or simply stated, that's how we work with a pulley system where I have a mass on each side and want to know what the final velocity is when the heavy object reaches the ground. And that's how you do that problem.